You see, India has a great history in linguistics that they started it all. Like, for instance, the very first Sanskrit word that I knew, knew I learned in the class of uh, Dutch diction, or properly speaking. So we learned about the, uh, the sound harmony between succeeding words. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, like, for instance, we learned that in standard Dutch, you say dat ding, which means that thing, okay, dat ding, which means that the first word adapts to the second word. Dat ding becomes dat ding, you know, voiced. Whereas in the Flemish dialects, you get the opposite combination, dat ding. So the dat retains its unvoiced characteristic and the second word adapts becomes unvoiced whereas the, the consonant is originally voiced um now this phenomenon i mean i don't want to trouble you with uh, dutch linguistics but the interesting thing is that this phenomenon of the adaptation of succeeding consonants was called sandhi so the, the 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 euphonic word link which is so uh, so important in sanskrit you know and which is described in detail by panini and the other grammarians you know when they saw the the, the, the linguists in the 19th century saw this they said oh but this is very relevant you see this explains lots of things in western languages and so this became a standard concept in in linguistics so you see it all started in india so Hindus ought to have been the best linguists, but unfortunately, they started all this decolonization business. Going, you know, <laughs> oh, lingu linguistics is a racist pseudo science. That's so all. Okay, well, you see, to to encourage them to take pride in Sanskrit linguistics, uh, I'd like to mention to them that the periodic table of the elements uh, by Dmitri Mendeleev. Uh, was inspired by the perfect structure of the Sanskrit alphabet. You see, he saw that structure also at work in the word of the chemical elements. Shrikan sir, actually, I have a question for you over here. You know, as Conrad, Dr. Elts has uh, mentioned this, you know, there is a lot of uh, lambasting of linguistics inside the Hindu circles by calling it racist, pseudoscience, and people who promote it are called many things. Yeah. which unfortunately includes you also by a certain section. Yeah. So how do we convince them that everything is not a Western construct? And even if it is a Western construct, if it makes sense, it makes sense. Now, uh, this is something, you know, um, I, I gave the example of Asmi, Asi, Asti, which becomes Asmi, Asi, Asti in Russian. And this, this is so simple and direct that anyone should understand that such words are not borrowed, that they have to show relationship, mm. but they refuse to accept it. But the thing is, you know, that we easily blame Indians for not accepting linguistics. I myself have done so many times. But the thing is that the Western scholars blatantly and brazenly do the same thing without anyone questioning them. Like, for example, starting from Witzel to Sturman, there have been so many articles about the Dasharatne battle. In all of them, they say that it was a battle between Sudhas and indigenous non-Indo-European, non-Aryan people. And yet, all the names of his enemies are either the names of Iranian groups on the Western Front or on the Eastern Front, they are names of, uh, you know, Matsyas and uh, means typical Sanskrit names. Not a single one of them is a non-Indo-European name. Yet none of them feels any compunction in treating this battle, which has nothing non-Indo-European in it, as a battle between Indo-European and non-Indo-European. All of them do it and they continue to do it. No one asks them, how How do you say that when not one of the enemies has a non-Indo-European limb? No linguistic connection is there between Indo-European and non-Indo-European in this battle. So they do it brazenly and blatantly. They pretend that they are actually addressing a linguistic issue. But they blatantly and completely ignore linguistics when it is convenient to them. So, you know, it is something that Indian should, as it is given here, Hindus ought to have been the best linguists. Unfortunately, lingu uh, Indians have Hindus think it is some take pride in rejecting things 
claiming that they are Western. It means I find it very funny that you know people who study in English, write in English, use the mo latest modern gadgets, and then when you use a scientific principle, they claim it is a Western one like linguistics, and we should not use it. It's a, I mean, it's inexplicable.